guys, it's Rob here from Dodging Fast Game for PluginBoutique.com. Um, today I'm going to be doing a very short video on LFO Tool by Expo Records. Um, people quite often ask me what plugin I couldn't live without or I use so often uh, that it would be very strange for me not to use it, and you're actually looking at it. Um, so LFO Tool, for me, has pretty much replaced sidechain compression, um, pretty much down to its versatility, um, but I'm going to very quickly show you a few examples so you can kind of see what it does do. Uh, basically, it's a volume shape plugin that you can put onto uh, as an audio insert onto any channel that you want and it will kind of recreate what sidechain compression might do. I'm just going to get very quickly into an example to begin with. So what I've got, I've got it on this uh, baseline loop here. I'm just using a bunch of loops to demonstrate it. If you have a quick listen to it with it on. And what it's doing is taking the very beginnings off. Now, anyone used to sidechain compression will be used to this, but what you'll often find with sidechain compression is it can be hard to get very tight envelopes without using tiny little hi-hat triggers or a lot of, you know, kind of trial and error to get the curve that you want. Whereas for this, you can just draw it literally straight in. So if I play it without this, you can hear the effect of how the kick and snare will be drowned out. And within. So what you can hear is the kick and snare are cutting through a lot cleaner without me having to reduce the volume of the bass. So what that means is I can get a much louder final master without squashing everything too much with uh, with limiting. Uh, so it just makes uh, your tune sound a lot louder, heavier and tougher and kind of fills the, the, uh, the gaps in. Um, it's very, very easy to use. I'll come back to the settings using this example in a minute, but I just want to run for a few more samples here. So what I've got now is I've got a, a kind of like the classic sidechain pump compression running on this one rather than a very short dip on the other one. And you'll notice it continues going even without the kick playing because the kick isn't the trigger, it's just you know being used as part of this example. Um, I also did another version of this using um, filter automation because this doesn't just necessarily automate the volume, you can do things like the resonance, the cutoff, panning, all this kind of stuff uh, with built-in filters. And what you'll notice is I automated the, the, the cutoff position there as well, so you've got kind of a bit of movement in it. Um, another thing you may wonder with this is, oh, that's great. Okay, perfect if I want to work on a grid. But what happens if I've got a slightly more synchronous pattern, you know, like, say, drum and bass patterns where the kicks and snares don't automatically fall on and fall to the floor beat like house music and a lot of dubstep does? Well, this is where MIDI triggering comes into it. So what I've got down here is I've got a drum break here. Um, these are all just kind of just sample loops and a bass line. And I've got a MIDI trigger here, which is literally just set to trigger the input. I mean, it work differently in every DAW, but it's how it works in Cubase. Uh, triggering the input uh, of this LFO tool here. So I've just literally just turned it to MIDI note re-trigger uh, and set a relatively slow speed that this loops because you can set the resolution here of, of how quickly it cycles through the grid so if you have a quick listen to it here looking at the grid you can see sorry with the midi soloed you can see that the midi there is just re-triggering every time it hits so I've, I've just put it into little sections where i can move around like drum hits on the sequencer very easily and you can just move them wherever your kick and snares are so it's really quickly which obviously without this would sound like. Obviously you can do that with sidechain compression, but I would argue this gives you a lot more flexibility in the kind of curve that you want. So whether you just want the transient chopped out, whether you want a pumping sound, whether you want it to come down a little bit and kind of be dipped, or you want a full scoop right out so it's completely silent for a second. Um, it's really good just to get the exact sound that you want graphically, which is what I like about it. 
So yeah, hopefully that's given you a very good example of, of where this would generally be used for. It's, a, it's an amazing sculpting tool for getting you know very clean mix downs, and there's so many big dubstep producers are using this, and that's how you get this extremely loud wall of sound uh, kind of thing. Very very heavy mix downs, but also a lot of cleanliness as well. Uh, if you listen to producers like Zomboy and Skrillex, you'll hear their tracks are stupidly stupidly loud, but they don't seem squashed, and it's because of LFO tool uh, mainly. Um, in terms of creating the space in the mix that we've had this 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 kind of um this massive increase in sound obviously you can do it with sidechain compression but i personally think this is a cleaner way of doing it and hopefully this uh this demo has given you a good idea of that so yeah this has been rob from dodge and fusky and for plugin boutique.com yeah.